Hello everyone, welcome to another video of the course. In this video, we are going to repeat the no load field calculation with a better initial mesh to do visualizations better, right? So we will add a number of surfaces at a specific location so the motor used to generate this kind of plots right this is a streamlines of the flux density and you can see the motor poles and this is the flux density magnitude on a circumferential cross section of the motor so let's start here is the model and let's hide the region and generate the mesh okay just i want to generate the initial mesh without specifying any mesh operation and modify the mesh step by step so select all objects and plot mesh yes so here you can see the initial mesh as you can see here, because we used fillets, right? On this edge, we have a high curvature here, and the size of the mesh is small in these regions in compare with the middle of the coil. But is this mesh density really required? No. How we can limit the size of the mesh for this high curvature surfaces? So, I select all objects and hide. Select all coppers, show. And I press F on my keyboard so I can select faces, right? So, Let's have the side view and select all of these faces, right? You can see the selected faces. And now I can assign this mesh operation, surface approximation, manual. And in the normal deviation, I can write 40 degrees. Right, so the angle of this curvature is almost close to the 90 degrees. So I want to have three mesh elements aligned with this arc. So 40 degree for the maximum normal deviation is a good number. So okay, and let's regenerate the mesh again so clean up the previous solution and generate mesh to generate the new mesh and compare with the previous one okay now you can see the generated mesh and as you can see we have three mesh elements along with this edge right so we limited the density of the mesh on these high curvature surfaces and now i want to apply i want to select all coils and apply inside selection length based to limit the size of the mesh inside the coils i write depth of the coil divided by three right this size and let's repeat the mesh generator again so here you can see the modified mesh right now the size of the mesh is okay for the coils initial mesh we have a good initial mesh and now i want to apply mesh constraint for the rotor core and the stator core. So I select the stator and rotor 
assign mesh operation inside selection length space i write l stack divided by 5 what is the l stack you know that the l stack is equal ost minus ist divided by 2 this parameter right so we want to limit the size of the element maximum size of the mesh element in the rotor core and the stator core by this number okay what is the value of ls tag is equal dollar sign osd minus isd divided by 2 let's repeat the mesh generator again generate mesh to check the modified mesh okay mesh generator completed and here you can see the generated mesh so this is a good initial mesh for starting the solution and for magnets because we have a high flux density variation right inside the magnets so i apply this mesh constraint also for magnets select all magnets inside selection and i write ls tag divided by eight yes so we can repeat the mesh generator and generate the new mesh again but before that, let's add these two important surfaces. One in the middle of air gap, and another one is a circumferential cross section. So, this is the surface that is in the middle of air gap, right? Between the rotor and the stator. Actually, the contact area between the rotor and the stator yes this is used to generate this plot the flux density variation you can see the poles right here in this figure also we can plot the magnitude of the flux density so i can select the relative coordinate system one and from here draw a circle another one let's set the center point and radius the center point i write zero zero and negative of gap divided by two the radius osd divided by two for this circle i write zero zero and negative of gap divided by two and isd divided by 2 so circle 10 circle 9 subtract yes and this surface is in the middle of air gap right we can zoom right here because we used gap divided by 2 the negative of gap divided by 2 in this coordinate system so this is the surface that we generated so i change the name of this circle to air gap surface and because the density of the mesh in air gap is important i apply this mesh operation on selection length space l stack divided by 10 in a gap okay so this is a model surface and the mesh is generated on this surface the solution mesh and now i am going to generate a non-model surface right this circumferential cross section this one in the middle of the structure so i select 
the global coordinate system and draw a circle. Circle 10, set the center position to 0, 0 and negative of 5 millimeters mm. The radius equal to D divided by 2. Yes. What is the value of D? D is the average diameter, the mean diameter. Yes. Is equal to ISD plus OSD divided by 2. So, dollar sign ISD plus OSD divided by 2. Yes. So, now let's suppress the area the cover lines command to have simply an edge right so this is an edge object and we can now sweep this circle 10 along a vector 0 0 0 50 to generate this surface Let's make it parametric. The height is equal to, I write L axial plus 10 mm. What is the value of L axial? The L axial is the total axial length of active parts, right? From the bottom surface of the stator core to the top surface of the rotor core. So this is equal to depth of stator slot plus depth of stator huge plus gap plus depth of magnet plus depth of rotor huge. Yes. And as you can see here, I consider it 5 millimeter offset from both sides. Okay. And I don't want to set this as a model object. So let's change the name to circumferential cross section surface. Is this a model object? No. This is a non-model object. This is a model object. And now let's generate the mesh. Generate the mesh to visualize the mesh on objects and then run the solver to solve this problem and visualize the results. Okay, mesh generation completed and now let's plot the mesh. So I select all object except this circumferential cross section surface and plot mesh yes so you can see the quality of the generated mesh so now i can run the solver to generate the results right the figure of streamlines and the magnitude of the flux density in eight gap so i set the maximum number of adaptive passes equal to 3 and this is the nonlinear residual. You can consider a higher number here and a lower number here. Just I want to save the time now. So in your case, you can consider a higher number of iterations for solving of this problem. Okay. So let's run the Analysis setup one. Analyze. Okay, simulation completed. Here you can see the solution mesh, right? The refined mesh after three adaptive passes. This is the solution data. You can see the total energy, the number of mesh elements. Yes. Even you can check the quality of the mesh inside this region so 
let's hide this circumferential cross section surface and use a clipping plane add right here this is the normal surface right to check the quality of the mesh inside of this region okay so this is really interesting a very powerful software we can check the quality of the mesh inside the motor this is fine this is really fine and now let's generate the plots so let's delete this mesh plot and select this circumferential cross section surface show field b b vector streamlines yes to generate the stream lines bigger right in the middle of the structure so this is very nice the distribution of the flux lines right stream lines of the flux density in the middle of the structure so you can see the motor poles right consequent poles of the motor and you can change the scale the range here if i write here 1.8 apply yes we have high value of flux density in the back iron of the rotor core so this is the first graph that you can generate and practice visualize the data the next one is the flux density vectors on this air gap surface so let's hide all objects and on this air gap surface plot the flux density vectors right so you can see the motor Poles. We have 20 poles, right? So you can see the north pole and south pole of the motor. Then you can reduce the spacing, right? So now we have a better resolution. So this confirms that our settings are correct and we can continue the design so okay in this video just i wanted to explain how we can refine the mesh and how we can generate this kind of plot from the next video we will start the analytic design of the motor and we use the excel file to do the motor sizing yes and after that we will come back to the finite element software to start our finite element calculations for example magnetic loading generate the magnetic loading graph and so on Thanks for watching.